In this video, we're going to take a look at the web challenges from Tosuku CTF or Suku CTF. I don't know if it's a silent T or not. Anyway, the first challenge is called Len Len, and the description says length.length .length is six question mark. It gives us an example curl command, which if we try and run that, it gives us a different curl command to run with a post request. So let's take a copy of that. We send that and it says no flag for you. The sanitized string is, and it gives us the array that we just sent and the length is nine. So let's take a look at the source code that came with it. Let's trace this back from the goal, which is to return the flag, which you can see in the environment variable. And in order to do that, the condition here is that array.length be less than zero, which doesn't make any sense. Let's trace our way back to the code. So to get to this stage where the array is generated from json.parse on sanitized, you can see that sanitized is actually the string that's passed to chal, let's see down here. So we make a post request, it takes the array from our body, and then it calls chal on array. If you don't provide an array, it'll have this default one here. And let's see, we provided the one, two, three, four. Initially, before I even looked at the source code, I was just thinking, oh, it adds up to nine. That's one plus two plus three plus four. So I tried to change this to a zero. But yeah, you get the same output and looking at the code, we can see why that is because it's looking at the actual length of the string. In fact, this isn't an array at all. It's just a string and it's going to replace any spaces that are in a string and it's going to check and see if it's less than 10. If it is, we don't get the flag. It's just going to return. So summary is we need to pass in a string, which is 10 characters or more. And then that string is going to be parsed with json.parse. And then the array.length needs to be less than zero. Let's think about what we're actually creating here. It's not an array, it is the output of json.parse. And then we're checking the length property of that object. So that means if we go back to our terminal, let's go and change this array. And of course, it doesn't have to be an actual array, it's just looking at a string. So why don't we say it's a JSON object and the length is going to be, and then we'll say minus 420. We send that off and we get back the flag because what's happened, it's taken the string, which is 10 characters or more. So it's passed the first check and then it's passed the JSON, generated this array object, and then it's checking the length property. So if we like didn't spell length right, that's not going to work because it needs to be that property of the object. And obviously it needs to be less than zero. The next challenge is called flash and the description says three, two, one pop. And we have this page. I'm just going to convert it from Japanese to English. And in fact, there should be something here to always translate. Yep, let's do it. All right, it says we can start. So if we click on start, it's going to come around with 10 different rounds. And you can see that we have these numbers that flash on screen very quickly and then disappear. And it'll come through to another page at the end, which will tell us to please enter the total. So it sounds like we just need to add up all of the numbers that it came up with and then submit it. And my first thought here was if we go to our HTTP history in Burp Suite, we'll see that it makes a GET request and it comes back with the round. Obviously, we can't extract the text from here, but there is a 500 millisecond delay on each of these requests. My first thought was, well, we can just go and do a match and replace rule and then say we want to do a response. Actually, let me create a new one, response body. And then we'll just tell it anytime you see 500 like this, change it to 5,000. And we also want to make sure it's not just applying to in scope items because I don't have my scope set at the moment. I don't know why these are minimized. It's kind of annoying. Anyway, let's go back and try the same thing again. We click start and now we should get five seconds. So we can just take a note of each of these numbers each time, note them down and then go and do our calculations. You'll see what the problem is with this idea in a second. Well, in five seconds, because we just added a big delay. Yeah, here we go. So we get to round four and actually there is no image displayed at all. And the same with five, six, uh, maybe seven. So if we can't extract the numbers from these ones, we're not gonna be able to get that sum regenerated. So what else could we do? Well, the other thing that I noticed in here in the HTTP history is each time it calls the get request on flash, it gives us a new session cookie. And we could just take this and go and use flask unsign, And then we decode and we pass in that cookie. 
and it'll come back and tell us what the round number is and then what the session ID is. So, all right, something worth bearing in mind. I think from this point, the best thing to do is go and take a look at the source code, which did come with the challenge. And we can do that. Let's see what we've got. Docker file, Docker compose, probably not too interesting. The main stuff is going to be in app.py. And I saw this and instantly thought, uh, maybe I'll skip this challenge because it looks like they've tricked me into doing a crypto challenge, calling it a web. But it had quite a few solves anyway, so I thought, well, let's give it a go. There's quite a lot going on here. Here, I'm not going to try and go through everything. The first thing to note is that we've got this seed.txt, which is being read. And if we go in here and have a look at seed.txt, we can see that that's redacted. So I thought we were going to need to try and like crack the seed, or maybe we could just use like the first three results and the last two results in order to calculate the other results. But actually, it turned out to be quite a bit simpler than that. Notice that this is in static. And I just thought, okay, let's go and try if we can go here to static seed.txt. And it actually gives us a seed, so we don't even need to calculate that part anymore. So we've got the seed. Let me go back again and see what's happening. We've got our rounds. Let's go down to flash. Okay, so we do the rounds. It will generate round digits and it takes in the seed and the session ID. Now, remember that the session ID was changing each request. So we could write a script which is going to grab the new session ID each time and then update this per round. Another option is just to try and send the same session ID each time and see if it actually works like that. Obviously, with Burp Suite, it's automatically changing the session ID, but if we write a script, we should be able to get around that. So what's our goal or what's our uh, attack plan? We download the seed. We've done that already. We've taken a copy of it. We are going to go through 10 rounds in one session, so we'll keep the same session each time. And then we're going to decode the session ID from the cookie after the 10 rounds and use the known seed and decode a session ID to generate all 10 numbers. I basically just got a chat GPT to make me a script to do this. So let me open up the solve.py and paste this in. You know it's chat GPT because of the comments and the emojis. And yeah, we put in our seed here. We have put in the same parameters that we have in the app.py. And it's going to start off by creating a session. It's going to go through all 10 rounds. We need that sleep to be in here as well. Uh, due to the auto redirect and then we're going to extract the session id from the cookie we are going to generate all of the numbers so we've got everything that we need we've got the seed we've got the session id and the round number so that's all we need to generate the same numbers that they're generating and obviously we need to do that because some of the images are missing and it'll tell us what to submit and then it'll even do that for us so let's go and do python solve.py all right it's resetting it's doing each of the 10 rounds And there we go, it's computed all of the rounds. It's given us the same value. I don't really know what the point of that was, but yeah, it tells us what the value is to submit. We submit it and then we get the flag, which has something to do with path traversal. I'm not really too sure what that was about. We didn't really need to do any path traversal. We could just access the seed directly. I don't know if that was intended. Maybe there wasn't supposed, maybe this wasn't supposed to be publicly accessible or there was supposed to be some directory traversal in there instead. But yeah, that's how we can solve this one. The final challenge is called YAML WAF, and the description says YAML is awesome. And it gives us this example commands to try like it did on the previous one. So I do that and it says that we're not allowed. Let's just jump over to the source code, which was downloadable for this one as well. And there's very little in here. We've got the root directory, which we just tried to post to. But the first thing it does is check if the request body has flag in it. And if it does, it'll say not allowed. So like if we go and test this, oh no, that's not a good character to add. Let me do a different one. Yeah, if we go and test that, it'll say file not found instead of not allowed. So I thought maybe some like Unicode or some weird characters we could do here or putting in some like new lines and all that sort of stuff, which didn't work. So I'll not waste time doing it in the video. What's the next part? It's going to check if we have two backslashes, a forward slash or two exclamation marks or the left angular bracket. And if it does, it'll say hello hacker. So if I try and put in here, oh, not that one. If I try to... I was supposed to do that one. Oh, it's because I had flag in there still. Okay, well, there you go. Hello, hacker. So if we put in any of those blacklisted characters, we won't get to the next stage either. If we provide a payload that doesn't have flag in it, doesn't have any of these bad characters, then it will load the request body with YAML. That is the JS YAML, and we can check here to see the version. It's actually the latest version. So if you're looking for some like CVE or something, probably not. And then it will set the file path to be data.file, which is why we were trying to provide the file here. In fact, 
Let's go back here and do server.js and you'll see it actually returns the server source code. So I also thought maybe there's something else on the server, but yeah, none of these other files are of interest to us. And yeah, if the file exists, then it'll return the contents of the file. So it seems pretty simple. There's not too much code here for us to look at, but I was really struggling to find something which had to find like a YAML injection CTF write-up or something like that, which actually had, uh, which didn't include these characters, should I say. So to give you an example, I had a look at Jorian's blog here and there's a JS YAML. It says le less than 4.0. But that's probably just at the time that he wrote it, I'm assuming. And it has an example here. So I was trying to do stuff like this, but obviously we can't have the angular bracket in it. And we also can't do the second payload because it's got the two exclamation marks. So yeah, I kept searching around. I kept using ChatGPT and wasn't really getting any results. It suggested using like a brute force script to try different weird characters and just none of them would work. Actually, I changed the model of ChatGPT from 04 to 03 and it actually seemed to provide something better. So let me take a copy of that. It's kind of similar to what we just looked at, but it doesn't use two exclamation marks or the angular bracket. So let me go and paste this into the terminal. And what is the payload doing? Well, it's still the same post request, text slash plain. We've got the data binary. The only thing is we're setting a custom tag here. So we're basically saying that anytime you see exclamation mark B exclamation mark, you want to convert it to this tag YAML org 2002 or whatever. That means whenever we do the binary option, it's expanding this part to what we just saw there, which enables it to process this base64 encoded flag.txt. So that will be converted to a node buffer, which will contain the bytes flag.txt. And it's as simple as that, really. We hit enter, we get back our flag. And that's it. That's how we can solve all three of the challenges from the Tosuku or Suku CTF. I must say that ChatGPT came in handier than usual for CTF challenges. Normally we just kind of go around in circles, whereas it seems to do pretty well with this one. The only challenge that it struggled with, I mean, I needed to guide it quite a lot in the other challenges as well, but this was the only one that it struggled to solve completely with the 04 model. But as soon as we moved it to 03 and gave it some gentle suggestions, it came out with the correct payload. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.